The study we presented was about fasting, short-term fasting around chemotherapy in breast cancer patients. It was a randomized controlled multicenter study. We started recruiting in 2017 and uh, we recruited breast cancer patients in early breast cancer that uh, had no underweight and um, no history of any eating disorder and so on. And uh, what we actually did was to um, have two groups of dietary interventions, so it was two active comparators. The one was a short-term fasting group, and they fasted around the first four chemotherapies they had in a three-weekly cycle for around 60 to 72 hours around each chemotherapy, starting approximately two days before and finishing 24 hours after the end of the chemotherapy, actually. And uh, the other group, in exactly the same time, they, they would eat like a vegan diet without a lot of sugar. Um, and in between chemotherapies, both groups had the same diet. So the results were quite interesting for us because the, the active comparator of the plant-based diet um, actually has some of the components, some of the biochemical pathways um, are activated that would be activated in fasting. So um, we were still very um, stunned actually to see that there is a difference, not only statistical difference, but also clinical difference in the primary outcome, which was quality of life. So obviously short-term fasting patients didn't have as much um, negative impact from chemotherapy than the control group had. And one of the secondary outcomes um, also is very interesting and we should focus our next study on that. Um, it was on fatigue. The short-term fasting group didn't even actually um, show signs of clinical fatigue in general compared to the other group that did, as you would expect in any chemotherapy actually. We actually also looked at anxiety and depression that was the same in both groups. Probably this quality of life um, improvement that we saw in the short-term fasting group has to do with the quality of life around chemotherapy. We are still looking at uh, the consequences from chemotherapy that patients had. We haven't got that data yet, um, but probably it is that way that, that really quality of life specifically during chemotherapy can be elevated through fasting. And this might have various reasons, we have to look into that. But some things that I can imagine could be the reason is that um, one of the things patients reported to me, for example, is that they didn't have any aversions against any foods because they didn't have any foods during uh, chemotherapy. And when others became nauseated or would uh, avoid certain foods because they just had them and then they, they feel bad about them, um, Fasting patients reported they wouldn't have such problems. Even they lost less weight than the control group, which is interesting. We would have expected otherwise, right? Another thing is that because of the um, fatigue that they didn't feel, some of them reported that they didn't even um, really feel they had a chemotherapy, that they failed so well and that their families were even uh, more surprised than themselves and they were actually, that they were actually doing well and uh, would be able to cope with their everyday lives. So I think these are some components that show the potential also for this intervention during chemotherapy. Well, there's an, a lot of studies needed to get further information on, on how fasting works during chemotherapy, but also which pathways maybe fasting activates, which this low-protein, low-sugar diet wouldn't, um, that might be interesting also to target them through other therapies, right? Um, because they seem to enhance quality of life. And um, even in patients that cannot maybe do the fasting, if we have other ways to trigger those pathways, it would be very interesting. So I guess 
it's a promising research, um, but it still needs a lot of funding also because fasting or dietary interventions don't really have um, a lot of money behind them. So that would be good to have more and more people join the efforts.